Hello everyone and welcome back to another day of Road to TCG Worlds 2018. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to leave a like, it really helps out the channel. And if you're watching here live with me on Twitch, thanks so much for being here. I really, really appreciate it. And now we are going to move on to Trevenant. Um, Pixel TV, you're new to PCGO. Any tips to get competitive text as fast as possible? Basically, um, buy a lot of codes from either Crimson Invasions, Guardians Risings, or the new set Ultra Prism once it comes out. And then don't open the packs, trade those packs for the cards you need to build decks. And there's a very helpful um, trade value guide on Reddit, on reddit.com slash r slash ptcgo. You can find a trade value guide and there it will give you um, the amounts that in packs that the cards are worth. And therefore, um, that would be the fastest way to get competitive decks. Um, and then any coins you get, you should trade them for Guardians Rising packs, because those give you a chance at opening Tapu Lele, which is probably one of the most expensive cards right now um, in the game. And so, moving on to today's deck, we are featuring Trevenant. This is the list that was posted. It's only one card off. From the list that was posted on the LimitlessTCG.com website, which is a very useful resources, resource to study, um, the lists that are showing up at the um, at the tournaments and stuff like that and they also occasionally post articles which are also very helpful so um so yeah we are featuring trevenant trevenant break 160 hp silent fear you get to play three damage counters on all of your opponents benched or on all of your opponents pokemon benched and active and then the whole idea behind Trevenant is the fact that it has the ability Forest's Curse, where as long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, your opponent can't play any item cards from his or her hand. So the whole idea is using Baldi or using Ascension to block your opponent from having um, items during the whole game and as fast as possible. You attack 3 Slam, 60 damage and 20 to 2 of your opponent's bench Pokemon is actually also another pretty good attack that goes along with the bench damaging theme. We have 4 of the Ascension Phantom. Ascension allows you to search your deck for a card that evolves from this Pokemon and put it onto this Pokemon. So you can potentially Ascension turn 1 and therefore deny your opponent's item cards but the main idea is to use either Tabulele or Jirachi EX because we do have level balls to search for a Wally if we're going first and evolve that Phantom. We have one Espion EX because after we've spread damage around, we want to use Miraculous Shine to get rid of the pesky Zorak GXs, which are actually the threat to Trevenant. And then we have one Shaman EX to just have extra access to draw cards um, in order to get our energy, our rescue scarves, etc. Then we have four supporter cards, four Sycamore, three N, one Guzma, one Lysander, one Team Flirt Grunt, and the two Wally. Wally allows this deck to get the turn one item lock going first, whereas otherwise you wouldn't be able to because Wally does bypass the evolution rule. And then for item cards, we have four Versus Seeker, four Ultra Ball, four Enhanced Hammer, which is actually pretty novelty. We saw four Enhanced Hammer back in Memphis, Memphis in, the, in the top two deck, um, piloted by Azul in Elizabeth Carpenter, and then we're seeing it a lot more commonly nowadays. Um, we also have the three level ball, the four dimension valley, the two subrod, the one field blower, and the two rescue scarf, which read essentially like a splash energy, so you're able to cycle the Trevenants a lot easier. Finally, we have computer search as the A spec of choice, and so let's jump once again into the ladder to see how well we can do with this deck. So I'm just updating my Excel to showcase the, to, to record rather, the decks that will, um, or to record the games rather. Um, so far I've played 112 games of Pokemon this year between coaching, between testing, between streaming. And by the time, um, wow. This is an interesting hand. By the time Dallas rolls around, I'm very interested in seeing 
just how many games of Pokemon I actually ended up playing. Okay, so there's a Phantom. Start, we have the level ball to search for Jirachi, which is really nice as long as Jirachi isn't prized. Um, so yeah, Sandra Pero used this deck indeed at League Cups. He even wrote an article on six prizes if you guys wanted to check that out. Um, okay, so let's level ball. And based on my opponent's deck box, I assume he's using Zorak Lycanroc. So there's the Jirachi. Um, we see no Phantom Surprised, no Trevenant Surprised, and we know no Trevenant Break Surprised. No Pokemon are prized actually. Um, one Hammer is prized, one Ultra Ball is prized, one Versus Seeker is prized, so that's three. Um, one, one Sycamore is prized, I think, and one N. Maybe one rescue scarf. Yeah, those are the six prices. So we're gonna get Jirachi. I'm not gonna play Dimension Valley first, um, just because the longer you wait to play it, um, the better. Salud. And then we're just gonna Wally, and this should put a really big um, stop to anything that my opponent is trying to do. Um, is it the same list that Costa wrote an article about? Costa? Um, USP Master? Which Costa? Igor Costa? I haven't read any article of his lately. Um, ladder resets today. Apparently, I didn't know that. Um, any particular reason you're tracking your game count this year, Pablo? Just because it's interesting, I feel like, um, to, fi to see that. Um, I don't know, I'm generally curious that because it will be the first time that throughout the whole year I'm going to be a full-time Pokemon professional Pokemon TCG player. Um, I feel like it'll be interesting to see just um, how my how my time is divided and based on that like the correlation with the results and by keeping track of every game I play I feel like I can also give that to the people that I coach and it's a very like big resource of um, data for us to analyze and extrapolate um, win rates and stuff for all the decks. Um, so yeah, just, just because I like data and I'm a nerd, I guess. <laughs> so it'll be, it'll be cool to, to get to see all of the data points in the end. Um, yes, this is the list, um, USP45 Master, this is the list that Robin Schultz posted. That's exactly what we're using today. Okay, so my opponent got the Kuzma. He's gonna probably just knock out the Phantom here, which is understandable. Got a pretty good hand off of the N. And, but he didn't even use Strayed, interestingly enough. So, this knockout seems bad, definitely seems bad. But it's not the end of the world, I don't think. Um, if we can find one hammer, that could be pretty good. Here we're gonna take um, two prizes. I'm actually gonna attach energy to the Jirachi, just so that I have an option to retreat afterwards. Um, okay, so this is an okay hand, I guess. I'm gonna level ball. We are going to lose the Trevenant here. So what could happen is I could computer search. I think it's, I'm gonna need to computer search for an energy probably, or potentially for Espionex. So I guess I just silent fear here. Yeah, I'm gonna silent fear. I'm gonna take two knockouts on the two Zoruas, and I'm gonna set up the Zorark to be knocked out by um, a devolution from Espion which we know is not priced. Now I have plenty of cards to be able to get rid of for the Espion and the Energy. However, I might just end up using um, Silent Fear once more, just to clean up that Rockruff and then I can't evolve. Oh, he traded before benching the Rockruff. Okay, I didn't realize that. Ooh, okay, so... 
the Zerua right there is potentially a problem. Um, so, because if I devolve, I give my opponent the the Zerua. So I do find a hammer. So by playing hammer and by playing Lysander on this top Lele, I should be able to secure a way to... I should be able to secure um, another turn of Silent Fear at least. At least one turn. Okay. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna computer search away the Trevenant and the N. And I'm gonna grab another phantom, which is what I need here. And then I'm gonna super out back one phantom, one trevenant, and the energy, I assume. And then I'm going to versus seeker for N. Um, the idea behind hammer and Lysander is that uh, my opponent cannot. My opponent cannot attach and retreat at the same time. So there's the end. The rescue scarf is also pretty good here. Um, isn't Trevenant dead with all this work? Well, I guess we can find out. We'll see. We'll see how this how this plays out. Um, yeah, the quad enhanced hammer is really really good. Ooh. The stand in Zork. My opponent just has all the answers in his hand. That was the one combination of cards I needed my opponent not to have. And he has played literally nothing. Ugh. Okay. So we get the pieces back. So now. I really need an enhanced hammer here that would be my opponent's second tc so i'm actually just gonna um stick over here can't believe he had the exact combination of cards there could also team flare grunt could have also gone for team flare grunt here um no hammer Ugh. No hammer here. So do I just give up the Jirachi or the Lele? That was so rough. No, I don't think I can afford to give my opponent an extra turn. So I'm just gonna Ascension and completely whiff because I drew the two Trevenants. Oh. I mean, my opponent would have literally had so many other cards, and him having the Mind Jack Zorak already without having the. without Ultra Ball? <laughs> 1 in 30 chance. Look, he, he doesn't even play item cards before playing like on Rock's ability. Hessler Gaming, thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so, so much for subscribing that's very very kind of you thank you so much thank you so 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 much <sighs> okay thank you so so much okay so okay so i'm gonna do this because now I really need the grunt or a hammer. If I get hammer plus N, that gives us a chance. And there's the hammer. Okay. So the hammer helps a little bit. Now do I even want to sycamore here? Oh, I needed A versus Seeker. Um I guess not. Now we just pass. And hello, Poker Prince. <laughs> you wish you weren't at work. <laughs> yeah. I am at work, I guess. <laughs> yeah. 
So from the chat, who is going to Dallas? Let me know which of you guys are going to Dallas. Maybe I should have Sycamore here. Maybe I actually should have Sycamore. Okay, so there's the Lycan Rock. Oh gosh. This is where we lose, isn't it? Wow, really? Ugh. Is he really just not gonna do anything? Oh, he has a float stone. Okay. Okay, but he passes. Okay, so is there anything we can do to stop the Lycan Rock? No. We don't have any more ways to search for... Okay. This is still okay, I think. Maybe. Maybe we have a small chance here. That sycamore was just atrocious. The sycamore we got was absolutely insanely bad. No DC, which is good. No DC, which is good. Okay, so there's a sycamore. We definitely want to get rid of the floatstone here. We get a Kuzma, but no versus seeker for N, which is what we were looking for. Okay. So silent fear. We need two silent we need one more turn of silent fear and then we devolve and win. Hopefully. Okay. So there's the Lycan Rock. We have the Kuzma though, which is really good here. Just need my opponent not to have a DC. Does he just have double puzzle? Did he top deck the second puzzle? Oh my gosh. There was no reason not to play double puzzle the previous turn. So my opponent actually top decked the puzzle. That's ridiculous. <laughs> what a ridiculous game. Okay. Uh, we'll take the loss, I guess, but... That was rough. That was rough. It happens, I guess. That was very rough to... To go through, though. <laughs> that was very rough to go through. Okay. So yeah guys, um, huge shout out to Tabletop Village, um, our new sponsor who um, brought back the Pokedex series last uh, weekend, which I thought um, a lot of you guys enjoyed. It was pretty cool to just play non-meta decks and use those fun decks against you guys. Um, that should be happening again on Friday and Saturday this week. So looking forward to that. So yeah, huge shout out to Tabletop Village for ensuring that we can, that we could bring that series back. Um, Trainer Chip, <laughs> thank you so much for the cheers. Rough game indeed, but thank you, thank you so much for the cheers. Thank you so much. Um, you would go to Dallas, but your work has gone in the way. That's unfortunate. And okay, so we see a hex by my opponent. Okay. <laughs> oh gosh. What is this hand? What is this hand? Can I really afford to see more away these two cards and the two trevenants? I guess if I get a hammer, it's worth it potentially. Okay, and another phantom, that's good. Okay, so there's a hammer. Um, I'm not gonna train this, I mean, not gonna level ball just yet. I'm just gonna ascension. <laughs> one Trevenant is prized, so, and one super as well. So this is actually the only, only Trevenant we will have access to this game potentially. So that was a rough discard for sure. There's the sword arc. Can my opponent just whiff a DC potentially? Or the 
extra basic Pokemon he needs to get a knockout. Replaces the stadium, understandable. Um, too much Zorak. Yeah, these hands, I know. Okay, and there's a Sycamore, so... Will my opponent whiff? Nope, never. Never whiff. And we see an Oddish. What? Is this actually Zorak Vilebloom? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Are you serious with the Zorak Vileplume? Okay, we still have three hammers. We still have three hammers, so... <laughs> Zorak Vileplume, guys. New meta. Okay, so do I Sycamore? Trying to get a hammer? Or do I Wally the bench and evolve the bench? I mean, and evolve the active. I think I'm gonna Sycamore here. Well, I could Grunt, I guess. Yeah, Flurry Grunt actually is like a guaranteed hammer, so let's go with that. That feels a little bit safer. Um, I'll keep the energy though in my hand. Okay, so that's... <coughs> oh! No more Trenance. <laughs> okay, so that's another one in the book. Um, <laughs> Zorak Vileplume, I guess. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh my, oh my, oh my. <laughs> There's the second Oddish. Uh, we're seeing two Acerolas, Skyla, AZ. We see Olivia. Oh gosh. We actually see Olivia. <laughs> we see a Skylam. We see a Rick. <laughs> we see a Rick Andy. Okay, so props to my opponent for using um, for using an original deck, I guess. Okay, Zorg Vileplum. Okay, so now we actually can never win because we can't play Subrod, right? So I'm just. I mean, could we deck my opponent? By using Kuzma onto his Vileplume? Um, Olivia. Could we? He has one AC at least. What if we do that? What if we actually do that? Okay, I'm gonna end here. Okay, there's a Jirachi. So we'll see what other resources my opponent ends up playing out. And then we'll go from there. That Sycamore was brutal on turn one. <laughs> Absolutely brutal. And my opponent was holding the perfect hand. He started the perfect hand. Okay, he's also using Hex. That's a third DCE. So in theory, how many ACs does my opponent play? Okay, if we see him play another AC, we just immediately concede. Sorak Plume, new best deck. Primal Grodon could be a decent play for Dallas for sure. Um, my opponent just has knockout on the Lele. Oh, he can also Guzma out, yeah. There's one Guzma and one AC. He must have multiples of both, so yeah, I'll just concede. Yeah, Guzma just... And we couldn't bring it down to just Jirachi onto the Vileplume so that he couldn't Guzma, right? So yeah. Okay, let's try one more game with Trevenant. Otherwise, um... This is not good news. Just outside of top cut. That was you playing Zorak Vileplume? That's an interesting deck. <laughs> That's a very interesting deck. And GG. Um, it's a very interesting deck you have there. Very interesting deck. 
Zorark Vileplum. I guess it makes sense with AZ. Um, sucks that no more Forest of Giant Plants, I guess. But I had no way to take out a DC Serpentage because I had no more. Um, I had no more Flare Grunts. So I was never going to be able to use another um, hammer. Okay, so another potentially Zorark Lycan Rock deck. Can we finally make it a game? Can we actually make it a game this time? Okay, there's a computer search. Yeah, if I had if I had item cards and yeah, a hammer just wins us the game there because no more DCs, but where he could just AZ the Valplum and play special charge to get them back potentially. Okay, so we see computer search, we see puzzle that clearly indicates um, Zork. Or Zoru at least. No, definitely Zorark. <laughs> Obviously Zorark. Because Zorark is the com the greatest combination with Puzzle of Time. Okay, and we see my opponent grabs a Grimer, surprisingly. Um, these type of decks shouldn't be playing um, Pseudo Udo, I don't think. So... <laughs> okay, so what do we go for here? Do I Ultra Ball? I really want to keep the hammer though. Okay, I'm gonna Ultra Ball away these two. I'm gonna check my prizes. We see that there's one permanent break in the prizes. And then one hammer as well. Ooh, two dimension valley. Oh my gosh. Two valley. Um, and two energy. Oh, God. Watch me whiff the turn one Trevenant then. This is where I whiff the turn one Trevenant. I'm not even gonna Supra to decrease my odds. Okay, so we got the D Valley at least. We got the D Valley to work with that. Um, I'll keep the level ball. I don't really need the fourth phantom just yet, and maybe I'll want to bring Jirachi to to search for an N. <laughs> the Trev effect. You item lock everyone, but forget you can't get locked out too. <laughs> okay, so there's a DC. That's great. It doesn't matter where the DCs get attached as long as you get to remove them immediately. And then, if your opponent doesn't get an immediate use out of the DC, that's really, really good. Um, Acerola and Guzma already in the discard pile, that's great. And two puzzles. So I'm gonna venture here and say that... Oh my gosh. He's looking for the stand-in Zoark. That's the third puzzle. He's looking for the stand-in Zoark, guys. Which is exactly what happened in the previous game. The stadium gets replaced. <laughs> that means we only have one stadium left. Oh my. It is gonna be a rough one though. Our prizes means this is gonna be a rough game. Um, energy helps. Okay, now I definitely don't mind the, the Sycamore. I don't really need to get rid of my opponent's hand. Um, trading his six unknown for six unknown again. So I'd just rather get seven more cards. Um, could have maybe gotten a little bit closer to a Trevenant break, or rather the Dimension of Volley. But no such luck. So I'm gonna Ultra Ball away these two cards. I'm gonna search for another Trevenant. Yeah, just one Dimension Volley left, which really, really sucks. And I'm gonna evolve. 
And then I just pass here. The good thing is, he cannot retreat and attack at the same time, potentially. Only with the Stand-in Zorg. And now he needs Stand-in Zorg and a DC. So there's a DC immediately, once again. Um, Diamond Deaths, I have seen the new Glacian EX. Um, the Glacian GX, sorry. Looks like a pretty good card. Um, my opponent lost this card in another Skyfield, which is great. He's seen seven cards, he's gonna see an extra two after discarding the Oricorio. Um, Lycanroc plus Float also does a trick indeed. Lycanroc removes the Phantom, the Trevenant, and then Float allows him to retreat. There's another Rock Ruff. Oh man, if we had attacked the previous turn, we would have been in an amazing position. But I'm okay with just removing the. I'm okay with just removing the DC for now. Um, there's the Mallow for next turn, so I'm actually probably going to want to versus Seeker N that away. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna get rid of the energy. I'm gonna attach an energy so that I can start spreading. I might get the stadium, but odds are not in my favor. So I'd rather just have the second energy already in place. <laughs> but now the card I whiff is the Trevenant Break, which we only had a one of, I guess. So it's understandable. Oh gosh. Oh gosh, okay. So I will evolve here. The thing is, if I knock out the Rockruff, that means Zorg can come in and put us in trouble. So do I really just not attack here? Do I really just not attack? I generally think not attacking is the right call here. He, sh he doesn't have Mallow anymore, I, I, although I guess it is in the deck. He only has two TCs left. Do I also retreat so that I don't lose the energy? Yeah, I'm gonna re... Ugh. Is that too passive though? Oh, I can't attack. Yeah, you're right, I can't attack. <laughs> I'm too used to attacking with just two energy. I can't attack anyway, so that solves it. <laughs> Oops, my bad guys. I can't attack anyways. There's a stand in Zorark. So now all my opponent needs is a TC. But he will end us, so that's good, I guess. He gets to see six different cards. He can draw two more with Zorark. There's a stadium, there's another Trev. We're gonna see a trade here. Does he whiff? Odds are not in his favor to see the DC. So maybe this will compensate a little bit. But there's the Lycan Rock. Just one turn too late. Ooh, he's gonna corner us. But he doesn't even play any item cards from his hand. So the Guzma is not priced, correct? So that was actually a pretty good turn for us. Okay, before playing anything, I'm gonna Dimension Valley. Well, I don't even need to Dimension Valley, right? I guess it's better, because if I end up needing it later, he could potentially remove stuff that could get knocked out. Um, yeah, without all those puzzles, I should have this one. He didn't even play any item cards here, which is really good. And then I can just Kuzma up the Lycan Rock. Right? The thing is, I would love not to need to do that. Because then another Lycan Rock would actually not um, break the lock. So, hello Pixel Hungry. Okay, so I can evolve, play Lysander, attach energy, and pass. And that way, my opponent, even if he Lycan Rocks, he doesn't have a way to to get out of the item lock. Like he's forever item locked until I bench something else. Um, I feel like I need to attack though. I 
feel like I really need to attack. So share opponents. Just keep the possibility of playing items. That's okay, I guess. Um, I mean, I might as well bring up this orc so he can't stand in. Doesn't really matter though, does it? Yeah, I'll bring the Lycan rug up. Why not? And then. I'm gonna bring up this Trevenant, and then I, I, I am actually going to discard this guy and the energy. Ooh, the thing is, I know I have quite a few energy priced. Well, quite a few meaning two, right? But I really need the Trevenant break here. Okay. Okay, so finally we get to Silent Fear. Finally, we get the first silent fear off after all this planning and playing so many cards. Finally, finally, finally. Yes, oh, X immediately. Discards double choice bands. There's a Zork. Does he have a DC? Like, are the last two cards in his hand Floatstone DCE? Where's the Seeker? Sycamore, I would imagine. Like, we attack once more and then we devolve and we win. So we are good here. We should be good. And why, like, yeah, like, why wouldn't you trade before you play the Hex? That makes no sense. Okay, but there we go. We got the win. My opponent made a couple of mistakes there, um, which were important and there we go he also couldn't stand in anymore so my opponent did everything in the wrong order and i guess another bonus point for potentially um trevenant is the fact that um it leads your opponent to misplay so that's really good yeah exactly no stand in before hex which was really really good um trev gets a win against zorg uh, we lost against the other zorg decks but I feel like we drew a little bit badly there. But yeah, um, this will be it, the end of the tournament video. If you guys are watching on YouTube, don't forget to leave a like. It really helps out the channel. And if you guys are here live with me on Twitch, don't go anywhere. We are going to move on to Zorg ourselves. So don't go anywhere. I will be right back.